Ladies and gentlemen, a couple of days ago, Mojang released 16W35A, a snapshot for the development of Minecraft Computer Edition 1.11. This version contains some changes, but also a whole lot of bug fixes. I am Sliced Lime, and I am here to take you on a guided tour of this snapshot. First of all, let's start with blocks. If you renamed a block, and that block had a tile entity, which turns out to be mostly things with graphical user interfaces, but also banners. Then placed that block and broke it again, the name of the block would have gone back to what it was before you named it. However, that is now fixed, so these things retain their custom names. That applies to banners, hoppers, all types of chests, furnaces, enchanting tables, dispensers and droppers, and also beacons, although they don't have the custom name string built in, so if you leave a chunk and come back or reload your world, the name is lost. It also applies to brewing stands, but there's a bug currently that makes them not drop at all if they have been renamed and you try to break them, so that doesn't currently work all the way in-game. There's some other random little bits and bobs being fixed with blocks too. The Cocoa Beans hitbox animation was too small and the hand animation continued to swing after you placed a Cocoa block. And if you looked at a cake, the hitbox wasn't actually drawn where the cake was, it was drawn in the center of the world at 000. Now, a very interesting change to combat. Shields have been buffed. They now block 100% of the melee damage instead of 66%. This means that you don't take any damage at all, and it also means that they block effects from being applied, like hunger from husks or fire from a burning mob. Notably, this also applies to creeper explosions and a huge reduction in the knockback effects suffered. Another combat change. Splash potions of water have been around for a while while not really doing much. They now do one point of damage against an enderman and against a blaze. For mob changes, they've fixed the ender dragon being hostile to a player in creative mode, and they've also fixed the ender dragon having the ability to destroy its own fireballs. Slime mobs would have their health reset to maximum if you changed any of their MBT tags using a command, and that has now been fixed. The previous snapshot, 16W33A, introduced the ability to burn a whole bunch of new items as fuel in a furnace. There was a problem with some of these though, in specific with carpets and with ladders that would burn a fraction of an item that would add up to almost one. So for instance, if you burned three carpets, you would be one tick away from burning enough fuel to smelt two items. Some of these have now been tweaked further and there are no such situations remaining. Burning three carpets is now enough to fuel two full smelts, and the ladders have also been given a bump. The table on the screen right now shows the exact burn time of all the new fuel sources in this version. A couple of fixes to arrows. The slowness arrows that drop from strays wouldn't stack with a crafted or shot arrow. And if you shot a potion tipped arrow in creative, that would be possible to pick up, which is not normally the case with arrows shot in creative mode. And that has now been changed so it maxes the normal arrows. If you had an ender eye in your main hand and an item in your off hand and tried to throw the eye of ender, you would use your item in the off hand. If you looked at a pig with a saddle while holding a name tag and right click, you would get on the pig rather than name the pig. So there's no way to name a saddled pig with a name tag. Now there is, if you hold the name tag and right click, you will instead use the name tag. One final item fix firework rockets wouldn't spawn. And now they do. Redstone fixes in this version. Placing a trapdoor or a fence gate right next to a redstone source wouldn't update them to show the correct state. They would only turn to the correct state once you updated the block with a block update from another source. That has now been fixed for trapdoors but appears to not be working for fence gates. If you squashed a shulker with two pistons, the shulker would glitch out terribly and that has now been fixed. Hopper timings have changed in a recent snapshot and that broke a whole lot of things. They've now been changed further, but they are not entirely back to what they used to be. So in this example, the hoppers activate slightly out of sync. By the looks of things, one of the hopper chains at one point ends up one tick behind the for some reason. And that is likely to impact many redstone contraptions. At this point, the only thing we know is that it's related somehow to update order, and that is affected by the order in which the hoppers are placed. There are also some bug fixes for villagers. If you looked at a green villager, the newly added nitwits, it would be impossible to use a right-click ability. 
generated villagers also had impossible careers sometimes, and when converted from zombie villagers would have trades from a random profession instead of trades from their own profession. And newly generated villagers would have incorrect tier 1 trades. And while on the subject of world generation, villages in a desert would still generate with cobblestones around the well instead of sandstone. That has been changed in this version. Also, igloos would sometimes generate with zombies instead of zombie villagers in the basement. Two more world generation fixes, Mesa Bryce biomes would have pillars in them that looked incredibly ugly because of a change made to how deep stained clay can generate. This has been fixed in this version, so the pillars will now be made of stained clay again. And some stray chunks were being generated far away from players and that has now been fixed as well. Finally, there's some text changes in this as well, some subtitles being wrong, some things not being translated properly and so on, and one thing that I will mention specifically, one of the texts related to the user agreement surrounding which data is being sent back to Mojang has changed. That is, what used to be called Machine Specs Collection is now called Feed Us Data, and the description has been updated to match what is actually going on. If you're worried about this, what is actually going on is your user ID is being sent back to Mojang so that they can correctly estimate how many people are actually playing Minecraft. If you don't want to take part in this, you can easily turn it off by going into your settings under Snooper Settings and just switching this little option to off. And that was all for this time. If you want to know more about changes in new versions and snapshots, then feel free to subscribe to my channel where there's an update video for every new version or snapshot released. And keep an eye on the Minecraft News playlist. If you want to try this one out, remember that it is a snapshot and those are development versions and can have bugs, even critical bugs. So if you try it, do so on a test world or on a backup of your world. To get into this version, go into your launcher, create a new profile and select Enable Experimental Development Versions Snapshots. Now save the profile and select it from the Profile Selection drop-down box in the lower left-hand corner of your launcher and start the game. You will now be playing the latest snapshot version, which is currently this one, 16W35A. My name is Sly Slime, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.